dusty road had turned to Calvary. He picked up a rugged burden, so one day I would see. He loved me with a cross. He loved me with a to the call of love he loved me with a cross though I could not imagine what loving me would cost Jesus went to Calvary and loved me From the beginning, the price he'd have to pay, for my heart had gone so far beyond what other loves forgave. I was it on that hillside to see him on the tree, but as my guilt was placed upon him, I know that somehow he saw me, and I would be a sinner, enslaved by all my sin, if it had it been for Jesus and the way he loved me then. He loved me with a cross. He loved me with a cross. In answer to the call of love, he loved me Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Colby United Methodist Church for our Sunday church service. And if you're listening on the radio, we're just really, really pleased to have you with us today. My name is Nancy LaPelle. I'm, again, your liturgist. This seems to be my favorite thing to do. So if you would please stand and join me for the opening prayer. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Do you see Jesus reflecting back? Paul reminds the church in 1 Corinthians 13, 8, that in the past we could only see through a veil-covered mirror, but through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the veil was torn to the temple of our eyes so we could rejoice and see clearly Therefore, he writes in 2 Corinthians 3.18, we can see the glory of God as though reflected in a mirror. As we begin worship, we praise you, God, for allowing us to choose to be transformed into the same image as Christ, from one degree of glory to another. May we also not only see Christ in our mirrors, but in each Christ reflected in us. We pray this through the Son who reflects the Father. 
Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 2086, Open Our Eyes. Please continue with me with the invocation. We invite the Holy Spirit into this space and into our lives to help us with our baptismal promises to resist all evil and wickedness and to put our whole trust in Christ, acknowledging our shortcomings in doing both. May the Holy Spirit fill us, move us, shake us, inspire us, and transform us to better reflect Christ in our lives, relationships, and practices through this experience of worship. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And now we will sing three times, Make Me a Servant, number 2176. there. Hey, hi, all right. Maybe you like me better the other way. <laughs> no comments? Okay. Somebody get Nancy a cup of coffee. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to uh, share our, our joys and concerns uh, this morning. Maybe I just did. <laughs> Maybe, huh? And uh, uh, as we do that, uh, Nancy and I are going to walk through the aisles of the church and collecting uh, any, anything that you have to lift up in prayer uh, on the communication cards. 
And uh, as we do so, we're going to sing uh, the CARES chorus twice through as, a, as just a way of separating what happened uh, uh, in your life this week up till now so that we can be fully present uh, here in worshiping God. So let us sing. So this morning, uh, during the Sunday school hour, uh, Cade Carter came by, and uh, without the babies. Yeah, I've seen Cade. Anyway, he uh, uh, brought by a card, a thank you card that he asked for me to to read to uh, to you all, and so I'm going to do that as we begin our prayer time together because it's. It's a joy. So uh, they write, to, to our church family from Cade, Tisha, Corbin, Clay, Carson, and crew. We are so thankful for all of the encouragement, gifts, and prayers during our time in Denver. It has been humbling to have been given the support from you all. God has blessed us, and we are grateful to have two healthy boys to bring back home to our family and friends. We are excited to introduce Carson and crew to you once they have built some immunity to the outside world. Our experience is one that we will never forget, and we ask that you consider the families of the children and babies who are not as fortunate as we were. Please continue to pray for those who have fallen ill and those babies in the NICU with long journeys ahead. So thank you again. God is great <laughs> all the time, <laughs> indeed. So um, look forward to seeing them in church and getting to know them. And so uh, our, our grandmas are tired <laughs> this morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kate actually didn't have a lot of uh, bag uh, under his eyes. I was kind of surprised. So uh, you all must be really helping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... Um, so, okay, so, yes, <laughs> actually too, maybe too many cups. Here, I'm going to get rid of that so that it's, it's a little different shape, so. Um, also, uh, another joy is that uh, Gabby Miller's surgery to reattach uh, the, the rest of her skull back into the rest of her skull uh, was successful. And uh, what I've seen on Facebook uh, shows that she's smiling and kind of back to being Gabby. And I know there's still healing, obviously, uh, that needs to take place there. But uh, I'm lifting that up as a joy this morning. Uh, you know, what an incredible thing to, to think of how close to, to death she was. And now she has a future with hope. And so uh, what a joy. And and blessings of God upon us to give us that wisdom to be able to do the things we can do these days. So um, I got a call uh, last night from Cheryl Brin that Larry has the flu, so which can complicate now what, what he needs to have done in, in Denver. And so she just asked for healing prayers for, for Larry uh, so that they can continue that journey to get him back to being 
uh, well again, not just from the flu, but, but from all, all things. So, and then uh, J.D. Bennett is having surgery Thursday, it looks like, to put a stint in your leg, it says. So prayers for you as you in, in journey and healing. So, um, let's see. And Zoe is asking for prayers for a classmate, Brennan McCorkle. Did I say that right? Okay, so Brennan's baby brother is in the hospital. So, yes. So we will add, add, do you know the name of Brennan's baby brother? Brendan. So Brennan and Brendan. Brogan. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. It's it's hard to hear when you're coloring. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So Brogan. All right. Very good. And uh, Carl's final uh, performance. And so thank you again, Carl, for for your work with the choir and making uh, beautiful music. And so I know your your leadership has been greatly appreciated, and you'll be missed. And we got to enjoy one last song from you this morning. So, so thank you, Carl. Let's pray, shall we? All right, God, uh, in the in the midst of of chaos, <laughs> you bring calm. In the midst of the messiness of our lives, you bring us the blood of Jesus to cover it all. In the midst of our struggles, either with health or finances or spiritually or in our relationships, uh, you bring <coughs> mending. And so we offer up to you all of the, the things that we have verbally said this morning, as well as the things that remain on our hearts. And we cast all of our cares upon you. God, we pray for those who, who don't have a relationship with you through a community of faith. And just pray that through us, that whether it's for to come here, or whether it's to another expression of the body of Christ, that all people will find that wholeness that comes from being a part of a church body. We give you thanks for all of the, the many blessings of this community. for all of the, the opportunities and the abundance that exist here. We lift up to you the work of the church in mission, whether it's here locally to, to help those uh, in need, even though no one would say they are in need, or on a global scale, to help people be able to read and to write so that they can read your sacred word and share that good news. God, we ask your blessing upon us as a church, not so much for our own selves, but for the ways in which we can reflect you in this world, and in particular in this community. May you bless and guide our work, and may your Holy Spirit just equip us to be the church that you would have us be, and to be the people that you would have us be in our homes, in our relationships, in our businesses, in our schools, on our streets, in our jail and everywhere in between. And as such, when the disciples needed to know, Lord, how do we pray? You 
put on that teaching cap and said, pray this way. And so we, as your followers, continue to say the words that you say as we write them on our hearts and express them through our tongues as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd invite all of the salty singers up. And when they're done, any other kids are welcome to come up for the children's reflections this morning. Right down to all of the, oh, okay, good, Jason's getting in my mic. All right, all the kids to, for children's reflections, any other kids out want to come up? Come on up. And uh, Sam has it this morning, so Dr. Funk, it's all yours. Am I micing out here? Oh, there, there we, we go. go. Perfect. <laughs> so this week I was trying to figure out how to talk to you guys about summer camp when there's snow on the ground on Thursday. <laughs> And then yesterday, it was really nice. Today, it's been pretty nice, too. Hi, buddy. Come with me. 
So um, I'm here to talk about Camp Lakeside today. Has anyone been to Camp Lakeside before? No? Yeah? Yeah? Good, good, good. Did you go there to spend a week doing camping stuff, or did you just go there to hang out and see it? You went to hang out and see it? Well, I want to invite everybody to be able to go to camp this year. There's brochures out front um, to talk about what camps to go to and um, when they are and all that sort of stuff. The good thing is, is the United Methodist women here um, help uh, pay for camp. So, and also if you have a sibling, a brother or sister that's going, you get 10% off of um, yours as well. So that's always something good to think about too. Um, there's camps for all ages, um, all the way from kindergarten, all the way up through um, high school, and you could go family camp too if you want to go um, when you're younger than kindergarten. They do a family camp too. Um, the big thing about camp is that uh, you get to spend time outside in nature, out in God's creation. Do you guys get to do anything fun the last couple of days since it's been nice? What'd you do? Whoa, that's awesome. Did you do it out in the grass outside? Oh, even more fun. What'd you do? practice gymnastics what'd you do <laughs> there you go that sounds fun too so yeah um so i just wanted to invite everybody to come to camp and uh there's a big event coming up it's called spring into camping it's april 25th it's a saturday from noon to six there's going to be food trucks there'll be face painting um there'll be a, a cornhole tournament a three on three <laughs> basketball gaga ball um, and all sorts of fun stuff. It's from noon to six on April the 25th. So if you don't pick up a brochure and register today, make sure to come that Saturday, April 25th, and we can register for your camp um, that same day, okay? All right, let's say a quick prayer here before we go. Dear Lord, thank you so much for um, these children and for all the great activities they can do at Camp Lakeside, canoeing and swimming and hiking, and then be able to be out in nature in your creation. Um, dear Lord, thank you for Lakeside and all of its supporters and everyone that um, puts time and effort to go into that. Um, be with us as we travel through this springtime and um, get into summer and uh, help us to finish the school year strong and um, be ready to celebrate you at Camp Lakeside this summer. In your name I pray. Amen. Sam forgot to mention the best part. Every night, s'mores. Oh no, I just, I just declared it. <laughs> Every night I'm there. <laughs>